I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963. Thank you all so much for your prayers and support. God bless. Twelve people have been killed in eastern Syria overnight in a series of alleged Israeli drone strikes targeting pro-Iranian militia groups. The dozen victims all said to be Afghani or Iraqi members of the militia. The eight airstrikes hitting just before midnight Saturday were aimed at munitions and military vehicles just days after they'd been restocked. This just 48 hours after another set of alleged Israeli airstrikes in the region. Syrian media reporting nine deaths and massive damages to a weapons storage facility. As we continue to watch the Muslim world unite against Israel, the Bible tells us there are four possible prophecies on the verge of finding fulfillment. Isaiah 17.1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. In the last days, the prophet Zechariah tells us Israel will be the focal point of world conflict and he gives a dire warning to the nations who would dare come against Jerusalem. Zechariah 12, 2 and 3 Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. Daniel 9, 26 and 27 And after the sixty-two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. The end of it shall be with the flood, until the end of the war desolations are determined. Then he, the Antichrist, shall confirm a covenant with many, who is Israel, the Palestinians, and possibly other Muslim nations, for one week, which is seven years. But in the middle of the week, three and a half years, he, the Antichrist, shall bring an end to sacrifice and offering, and on the wings of abominations shall be one who makes desolate, even until the consummation, which is determined, is poured out on the desolate. In Bible prophecy, we are told in Daniel 9, 26 and 27, the prince who is to come, who is the Antichrist, will come on the world scene and strongly confirm a seven-year covenant of peace in the Middle East between Israel and her enemies. This covenant will kick off the seven-year tribulation. Are we seeing any signs of a covenant of peace in the Middle East between Israel and her enemies today? The Trump administration has said it's ready to recognize Israeli annexation as set out in its so-called vision for peace. The Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, dissolved all agreements with the US and Israel last month in protest. Jordan has warned of a massive conflict, and European nations have said annexation would spell an end to any future negotiations towards a Palestinian state and would not pass unchallenged. Former U.S. Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders offered his support to protesters via video link. The plans to illegally annex any part of the West Bank must be stopped. The occupation must be ended and we must work together toward a future of equality and dignity for all people in Israel and Palestine. The U.S.-Israeli annexation mapping team is due to have finished its work later this month, and Netanyahu can bring annexation to a vote in parliament any time after July the 1st. So who does the land of Israel actually belong to? Israel was given to the Jews forever, and God first made that promise to Abraham as we read in Genesis 13, 14 through 17. And the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are, northward, southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants forever. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth. So that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also could be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and its width. For I give it to you. The promise was then confirmed to his son Isaac, as we read in Genesis 26.3. Dwell in this land, 
and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands, and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. The promise was then confirmed to Isaac's son Jacob, Abraham's grandson, as we read in Genesis 28, 10-13. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night, because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head, and he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set upon the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. The promised land was described in terms of the territory from the river of Egypt to the Euphrates River, as we read in Genesis 15:18. On the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I have given this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates. God then reaffirmed the promise when he changed Jacob's name to Israel, as we read in Genesis 35, 9-12. Then God appeared to Jacob again, when he came from Padan Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. Your name shall not be called Jacob any more, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel. Also God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall proceed from you, and kings shall come from your body. The land which I gave Abraham and Isaac I give to you, and to your descendants after you I give this land. As we can plainly see, God gave Israel to the Jews. Israel's annexation of parts of the West Bank may take place unilaterally or may be subject to negotiations. It may happen as early as July 1st or may be delayed. While officials and politicians are debating all those issues, events on the ground have a dynamic of their own. Violence on the West Bank is now almost a daily occurrence. And even if the Palestinian Authority may not be interested in a large wave of violence, that train may have already left the station. Security is set to see a boost, as Israel gets set to meet a number of defense challenges. One of those, Israel's plans to extend its sovereignty over parts of Judea and Samaria. Leading Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is working feverishly to develop high-resolution maps for the process, as outlined by the Trump administration's peace plan. Matthew 24 15 through 21. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the housetop not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. When the Antichrist steps into the soon to be rebuilt third temple and proclaims to be God and demands to be worshiped as God, the Jewish people are to flee to Judea, to the mountains, and to do so in a hurry. The time of Jacob's trouble, also known as the seven year tribulation, is right around the corner. And the annexation of Judea is a must-have requirement for prophecy to be fulfilled. As scripture tells us, the Jews will flee to the mountains from Judea. In order for this to happen, the Jewish people first must occupy it. Everything is settling into place now. All the players are taking their place on the world stage. But with such a sensitive issue and too many cooks in the kitchen, Netanyahu and co-premier slash defense minister Benny Gantz deciding to set up a more exclusive security cabinet. It's tasked with addressing security needs for the annexation plan, as well as Iran's nuclear program. Pushback against the planned move, which is expected to face a Knesset vote July 1, has already begun. Thousands taking to Tel Aviv's Rabin Square Saturday night, many waving Palestinian and even communist flags. And as international bodies weigh in, German Foreign Minister Heiko Maas is expected to come to Israel Wednesday to warn Israel against the move, believing the unilateral move would endanger Israeli ties with Europe. The opposition coming from all angles. Domestically, Israel's Minister of Jerusalem Affairs and Heritage, Rafi Peretz, saying there are parts of the American peace plan he cannot agree with. On Facebook, saying, I'll never agree to a Palestinian state in my homeland.
We see the prophesied Antichrist ride onto the world stage in Revelation 6-2. Immediately following the rider of the white horse beginning his conquest of the world, we see peace will be taken from the earth when the rider of the red horse of war begins his ride across the earth as we read in Revelation 6-3 and 4. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see, another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that people should kill one another, and there was given to him a great sword. Those who are here to see this will be as those who lived in the days of Noah. All will be well and life will be moving forward as normal when suddenly, a flood of God's judgment will begin to fall on mankind which will last for seven years, the culmination of which will be the visible, physical, bodily return of Jesus Christ to the earth at Armageddon. So as we look at what prophecy predicts is going to occur, potentially in the not too distant future, the world is someday going to rejoice that peace has finally come to the Middle East. What will follow that, however, will be anything but peace as the world is suddenly going to explode into warfare. All those who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior will not be here to see the terrible time to come wherein God's judgment will fall upon a world that has forgotten Him. Where will we be? In the presence of Jesus Christ our Lord as a result of the rapture of the church. And there will be no announcement as to when that will take place whatsoever prior to it occurring. And if you find yourself hereafter it occurs, your future is going to be horrific. The stage is being set for Daniel's prophecy concerning the arrival of the Antichrist, which will be preceded by the rapture of the church. The only conclusion one can draw from all this is this. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Consider this a heads up if you're a Christian, and be forewarned if you're a non-believer. If you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's time to get to know Him, and the sooner the better. Stay tuned as we continue to watch Bible prophecy unfold right before our very eyes. Welcome to the Watchman YouTube channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Severe weather raged across most of the state today, battering protesters in Green Valley Ranch. Wind kicked up a dust storm and had those marching struggling to walk. Now the wind blew massive trees and branches down. This one near Washington Park smashing a car beneath it. Denver Fire responded to a call today of a person trapped under a tree. Copter 4 was over a billboard that was blown over on top of a building on Broadway in Jewel in Denver this afternoon. And take a look at these pictures from Brighton showing what's left of a shed scattered around somebody's home. Take a look at all of the huge trees ripped up out of the ground by the intense wind today. Copter 4 was over the southwest Denver metro area when we saw all of these trees down in people's yards. In the book of Job, chapter 37, 5 through 13, we learn that God controls the weather. God thunders marvelously with his voice. He does great things which we cannot comprehend. For he says to the snow, fall on the earth, likewise to the gentle rain and the heavy rain of his strength. He seals the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. The beasts go into dens and remain in their lairs. From the chamber of the south comes the whirlwind, and cold from the scattering winds of the north. By the breath of God ice is given, and the broad waters are frozen. Also with moisture he saturates the thick clouds. He scatters his bright clouds, and they swirl about, being turned by his guidance that they may do whatever he commands them on the face of the whole earth. He causes it to come, whether for correction, or for his land, or for mercy. Correction is the Hebrew word, Shabbat, which means, literally, a stick for punishing, writing, fighting, ruling, walking, etc. Job 37.13 can be translated like this. He causes it to come, whether for punishment, or for his land, or for mercy. God controls the weather for three reasons. 
for punishment, for his land, or for mercy. The extreme weather we have been witnessing is clearly punishment. Tropical storm Cristobal slamming the Gulf Coast. ABC's Megan Tavrizian shows us the flooding in Mississippi and Louisiana as the storm continues to move more north. This morning, a state of emergency as Cristobal batters the Gulf Coast. Wind gusts topping 50 miles per hour, viciously turning the water as waves thrash the shoreline. In Mississippi, at least 100 casino employees had to be rescued Sunday after floodwaters surrounded them. The water moving so fast, this minivan was swept off the road, left precariously tilted against an embankment. Beachfront buildings inundated as buoys begin to float away. The rough surf ramming the pilings of this pier. The storm surge even coming right to this person's doorstep. A similar scene in Alabama as homes and cars are swallowed by the rising waters. Even this boat was no match for the gusting winds and powerful waves. In Louisiana, the rough waters rushing up through the slats of this pier, the surf smashing out the stilts before sweeping the structure away altogether. Cristobal, seen here from inside the storm wall, is set to push north today, threatening states as far north as Wisconsin. It comes after the tropical storm kicked up wind and surf in Florida. This tornado touching down just outside of Orlando Sunday. Okay, hey, Penny, get inside. Get inside, girl. One of eight confirmed twisters slamming Florida over the weekend. In the aftermath, splintered trees, roofless homes, and shredded structures. If Cristobal does make it all the way up to Wisconsin, it will only be the fourth storm on record to reach that far north. Luke 2125, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. One of the many signs we are living in the last days right before the return of Jesus Christ is nations will be in a state of perplexity or uncertainty over what to do in a difficult situation. This is exactly what is happening in our world today. Tonight there are growing outcries to cut police funding. In Minneapolis, at the site of George Floyd's homicide, this city's mayor is showing up to offer support to protesters when the huge crowd confronts him. We don't want no more police. Is that clear? We don't want people with guns toting around in our community, shooting us down. It is a yes or a no. Will you defund the Minneapolis Police Department? Mayor Jacob Fry responds that he's against abolishing his police force. I do not support the abolition the crowd boos, then forces him to leave the demonstration. Just outside the White House, at what is now known as Black Lives Matter Plaza, protesters adding, defund the police. And today in New York City, Mayor Bill de Blasio announcing a wave of reforms, including pulling funds from the nation's largest police force. I want to make a statement of principle right now that we will be moving funding from the NYPD two youth initiatives and social services. The acting head of the Department of Homeland Security scoffed at cutbacks, saying more money is needed for training. It's an absurd uh, assertion. If you're concerned about needing to reform uh, different police departments or law enforcement agencies, you don't do that by slashing budgets. Uh, it makes no sense to me. I think it's a very uh, political statement uh, to make, uh, but it does not protect our communities at the end of the day. Tonight, those mostly peaceful protests continue. Large crowds in Boston, Philadelphia, and our Stephanie Ramos in New York City. Hundreds of protesters now. taking to the streets of New York justice. City. You can hear them chanting, now. justice now. Justice. I would like to see justice for all the unarmed men and women that have died on America's soil. Protests happening all over the country. Zachary joins us now live from the memorial where George Floyd died. And Zachary, uh, we, we saw what happened with the Minneapolis mayor there in your piece and some breaking news coming in tonight. This announcement, Justin, the Minneapolis City Council has announced their intent to disband the police department. That's right, Tom. Here's the statement that was just released saying our system of policing is not keeping communities safe and our efforts at incremental reform have failed. Now, the mayor wants to keep the police force intact, so it's unknown if and when this dismantling will happen. Psalm 2, 1 through 12. Why do the nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together 
against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall hold them in derision. Then he shall speak to them in his wrath and distress them in his deep displeasure. Yet I have set my king on my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree. The Lord has said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, be wise, O kings, be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and you perish in the way. When his wrath is kindled but a little, blessed are all those who put their trust in him. Demonstrations over the death of George Floyd spread across six continents over the weekend. Chants of Black Lives Matter echoed from thousands of protesters in cities around the world. They were voicing anger not only at racism in the U.S., but also in their own country. Senior foreign correspondent Elizabeth Palmer was in London for one of the largest protests. Black Lives Matter! In London, joining this protest mattered far more than the lockdown rules. Thousands, many masked against coronavirus, gathered outside the American embassy. What's your message to your American brothers and sisters? That we're with you and, and we love you and we want your message is heard over here and, and we'll keep fighting the same fight that you are. A few hours after the peaceful demonstrations ended, a small knot of troublemakers faced off with riot police were being pushed back now in an attempt to calm the violence. In the end, the police cleared the area around Parliament with only a handful of arrests. Earlier in Bristol, a crowd pulled down the statue of the 17th century slave trader Edward Colston. And then this symbol of Britain's own racist past was heaved into the river. In cities everywhere, people joined in. In Paris, they marched, as they did in Rome and Tokyo. In Hungary, a silent crowd took a knee for 8 minutes and 46 seconds, the time Officer Chauvin had his knee on George Floyd's neck. COVID-19 kept Thai protesters off the streets, but on screen in a massive Zoom session. But in Brazil, which has one of the worst coronavirus outbreaks in the world, demonstrators came out anyway in solidarity with what has become a worldwide movement. The focus of the protests in Sydney was on Aboriginal people beaten or killed in custody. In 2015, Australia had its own George Floyd, David Dungay, who died in prison shouting, I can't breathe. I can't breathe! I can't breathe! Those desperate words have now been transformed into a demand for racial equality and justice. U.S. embassies around the world, like the one behind me here in London, have now become the focal point for demonstrations and Black Lives Matter, a powerful new international rallying cry. Violence flared in Beirut on Saturday during Lebanon's first anti-government protest in months. Demonstrations had been ongoing since last year, but the coronavirus pandemic brought the country to a standstill, with the government imposing a lockdown in mid-March. But anti-government sentiment was alive and well yet again on Saturday, with protesters clashing with Hezbollah supporters and police, leading to 48 injuries, according to the Red Cross. Security forces fired tear gas while demonstrators looted and threw stones. Lebanon has been rocked by a series of political crises in recent years. An economic crunch brought on an unprecedented cross-sectarian mass protest movement in October, which forced the government to resign. But the new administration has failed to tackle the country's manifold problems, including economic turmoil which existed before the coronavirus pandemic. Now, the country has an unemployment rate of 35 percent, staggering inflation, and 45 percent of the population is in poverty. Some breaking news overnight near Santa Cruz, California, where a sheriff's deputy was killed and two other law enforcement officers were wounded in what investigators are calling an ambush. 
Sergeant Damon Gutswiller was responding to a call about a suspicious van when a man started shooting and throwing explosive devices at him and at other officers. Sergeant Gutswiller was shot and later died at the hospital. The 38-year-old suspect also was shot during the incident. He's being treated for non-life-threatening injuries. The man will be charged with first-degree murder. Sergeant Gutswiller was 38 years old, married, a father to one, and with another child on the way. The Santa Cruz County Sheriff said, today we lost a hero. The Apostle Paul in his epistle to Timothy tells us in the last days society would be in a total immoral meltdown. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Concerns about two crises in America unfolding at the same time. Protesters urged to get tested for COVID-19 and health officials telling them they should assume they've been exposed. 18 states now with a rise in cases. The CDC warning the U.S. could see 143,000 deaths from the virus before the end of the month. Here's ABC's Trevor Alt. Tonight, Americans marching shoulder to shoulder for justice in spite of the ongoing threat from COVID-19. It's tough because you want to make sure that you're speaking up for the disenfranchised. Demonstrators like Samantha Law handing out masks and hand sanitizer. Mask, gloves. She says staying home was not an option. Does the crowd worry you at all? Obviously, you're being proactive. Uh, no, it doesn't. I think that there's strength in numbers. It's important to gather during this time and do it safely. Like you can't afford to wait. You can't afford to wait. You can't. Today in Manhattan's Washington Square Park, essentially everyone donning a mask. Well, that may not be enough to protect them from the virus. Lots of people in close contact yelling and screaming can propel the virus. And 35 to 50 percent of patients with COVID can be infected and asymptomatic. There's a real concern for viral resurgence. Tonight, 18 states and Puerto Rico reporting rising COVID cases, South Carolina registering its highest single day total Friday, Florida coming out of its highest weekly spike. And with protests showing no signs of slowing, several cities now opening free testing sites. Seattle's mayor expanding the criteria to get a test to include anyone who's attended a large gathering. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. One day Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith 
the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. Biblical repentance is changing your mind about Jesus Christ and turning to God in faith for salvation. Turning from sin is not the definition of repentance, but it is one of the results of genuine, faith-based repentance towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Time is short. Accept Jesus today.